Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be fixing your tanks. Now I've done a few of these in the past and I'll link previous ones down below but I really enjoy doing these because I love to see the different styles of setup out there and I obviously love to help you guys out. Um, but as always I've got a lot of entries for this video. If you didn't know I post over on Instagram when I'm looking for setup entries so make sure you follow me over there. Um, but I had a lot so I'll feature a few today. If you don't see yours today it may be in a future video. Uh, also if you haven't already please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you actually get my videos in your subscription box but yeah let's jump into the first setup now this is from I believe Jacob and he actually sent me in a video of some things he plans to add into his geckos tanks once he upgrades I them. am hoping to be able to put in fountains yeah one fountain for each of them instead of these water dishes which are a little grimy and gross I try my best to clean them but it's tough we're gonna do circulating water fountains. I can show you a picture right there. That's what it's gonna look like. So the first thing I would say is I really like the idea of a fountain, but I would like it in an arboreal tank because they do tend to raise the humidity a bit, which you really don't want with a leopard gecko. I have also heard that the fountains do kind of sometimes end up a little bit smelly or have algae in it and it's not the freshest of water. So Although I totally see the appeal of having a fountain, I think it's more interesting than just a water dish. Um, for fresh water, you it might be best off just to replace that water daily in a dish. The next setup is a Crested Gecko one from Aaron, and he just wants to know about heating, keeping the humidity up, and my overall opinion of the setup. So the first thing I can spot is this dish of water at the back. That's a little concerning to me because I don't think you really need it. Crested geckos aren't really known for swimming and although it's not that deep, crested geckos aren't that big and you know there's a there's a little risk that something bad could happen and also the tank does already look very damp um, and it is probably quite humid already so just make sure you have a good hygrometer in the tank so you can measure the humidity and I can see you do have an analog one but in my experience analog like thermometers or hygrometers aren't the best. You really want a digital one with a probe. They're just more precise and they're actually not overly expensive. Remember as well that the humidity does need to drop a little bit during the day. So most people will spray a little bit in the morning and then do a big spray at night, uh, but it does need a little drop. You don't want it to be constantly damp. It doesn't need to be like, um, I see dart frog tanks a lot more damp than in comparison to like a crested gecko one. Now, as for the actual tank setup, I do think it needs a little more coverage at the top, so maybe a few more of those suction cut plants to really fill up that area at the back. It will create places to hide as well. Uh, you can also look into adding cork branches or liana vines to create more areas to climb higher up. Crested geckos generally like to be up off of the floor, and we don't really want them to rely on sticking on the glass all of the time, so focus on adding things high up and maybe even a coconut hide you know I love a good hanging coconut hide um but yeah so this could this could work with a lot more coverage up top and if you really want you could add a background this doesn't have to be fancy it doesn't have to be expensive you can literally stick a photo on the outside of your tank but I think it could really add to it the next setup is from Jasmine and she wants to know if she should get bigger tanks for her geckos. One is 9 inches long and the other one who's actually a female is 10 inches long. And by the way, these are in different tanks, they don't live together. Uh, so personally, to me it does look a little bit small, I'm guessing these may be 10 gallon tanks. And since you have been blessed with massive geckos, I think they definitely appreciate a bit more room to stretch their legs and hang out. I also find that when you have that extra room, you can get bigger, more spacious hides. Like for example, the one near the front here does look a little bit on the small side. Um, so if you can go up to like 20 gallons or maybe even 30, that would be absolutely amazing. And I know you also asked whether you have to put on the ceramic heat emitter and heat mat at the same time, uh, but heat mat on its own should be fine. This next setup comes from Brooke and she has a four month old male leopard gecko. Oh my God, look at that pose. <laughs> and look at that little face. He almost looks like he's sad for the mealworm that's about to be eaten. He is so cute. Uh, anyway, Brooke wants to know what she can add to allow him to explore more and also whether it's safe to add light since the room he lives in doesn't really get any natural light. So the first question about things to explore, it's a weird one because 
we can add a lot more things in here but sometimes it can look a little bit cluttered but I do think leopard geckos kind of like that so you can always add in you know some slate or driftwood um leopard geckos will climb but it's important they don't fall because they're not like they're kind of clumsy climbers they do love to climb they just don't have suction pad feet they are so jealous of the other geckos but they will try to climb just make sure there's less risk of them falling sorry this was kind of difficult to photoshop uh the angle was just a little bit weird so it doesn't look as great as i'm trying to like explain to you guys but yeah so lots of different things you can add in there some people even put in a little corner hammock that could work as for lighting an led will do fine it's important your gecko gets a day night cycle so ideally 12 hours of light 12 hours of darkness it doesn't have to be that strict you can pop on a room light when you're in there in the evening with your gecko that's fine but it is important your gecko knows day from night let's have another crested gecko set up so this is from oscar and he has a 45 by 45 by 60 centimeter tank which houses three female crested geckos i guess he wants my opinion on the setup and everything and he does say that he does have spare tanks if the geckos need separating so i will say i believe it's generally accepted now that multiple crested geckos shouldn't really live together back when i had both isla and lyra I know people get them mixed up but um there was a point where not only was it kind of common that people would try to have their female crested geckos but i actually tried it and when i did i did it in a big tank i did it in a 60 by 45 by 60 centimeter tank now i monitored them they did okay for like four or five days then one day i think i was putting lyra back in the tank and isla went to bite her face and i was like no so i separated them immediately and as i said now it's pretty much accepted they shouldn't live together um but 45 by 45 by 60 centimeters is really the minimum for one adult crested gecko so if you wanted my opinion i would recommend separating them and giving them each a minimum of 45 by 45 by 60. as for your setup though you know you've got a nice amount of coverage up top as always a little coconut hide is a great little addition uh, it sounds like i have shares in coconuts the way i go on about coconuts but i really like them because it means a gecko can fall asleep up high but they don't rely on sticking on anything so it my, my gecko just loves it but just make sure there's more than one hole in it for some reason if you have one hole in a coconut the crested gecko won't go in you put two or three holes in there it will go in it's a weird one i don't understand but they love it the next setup comes from holly she is a one-year-old gecko in a 20 gallon long tank and says how the gecko spends a lot of its time in just maybe one or two hides doesn't seem to explore much so she wants to know how to make the tank more interesting and also that she's thinking of using a deep heat projector but how would she go about setting it up so to me the tank looks nice and spacious and i'm glad you're thinking of using a deep heat projector because that was one of the things i was about to recommend because i see this a lot people have a nice big tank for their gecko the gecko pretty much always stays in their warm hide don't really use the rest of the tank ziggy was the same hence why she was the first gecko of mine that i tried a deep heat projector with and it completely changed the game hence why i rave on about this piece of equipment all the time but like i explained in the videos i made about the deep heat projector a heat mat and a ceramic heat emitter will sort of heat up your geckos but a deep heat projector will heat and energize your gecko like the sun does so they aren't really permanently stuck to the heat mat it reminds me of like if you were charging a phone but you have one of those phones that as soon as you unplug it from the charger the battery runs out really quick whereas the deep heat projector pretty much like charges up your gecko or your phone and you, you can go about your day for ages because it's proper energized it if it makes sense so now i will see like ziggy and minnie are the two that have the deep heat projector and they'll be all over the place they use all of their tank now which is amazing um i actually think people probably think i am paid to mention this <laughs> or it's sponsored i wish this was like morphe where you could be like use my code for 10 percent off but actually you earn like loads of money from it i don't but genuinely if i'm going to recommend you something i want it to be something that's really good and this is super new technology i'm pretty sure arcadia the only people that make it because they designed it um so it is what it is but it's a really really cool bit of technology so if you can get it and you want to use it go for it but 
Uh, yeah, if you wanted to use it, the best way to do it is to set it up on some slate or some rock. I got mine from a garden centre, like basically a massive slab of slate and broke it up with a sledgehammer. If you've seen that video where I get a sledgehammer, it gets messy. But um, I do actually have a video on how to set this all up and I'll link that video below for more details. Uh, but once you add it, you'll see a massive difference in your gecko. And the final setup we'll look at today is from Leopard Gecko Info. They basically have a 10 gallon tank for their year old gecko and would like to know if they should get a bigger one. Now I think this is a nice example of a simple starter setup. Obviously a third humid shed and hide would have been even better if you want to know how to make a humid hide for free, check out my other video. <laughs> but yeah, I would say it will be best to upgrade to a 20 gallon tank. I think 10 gallon tanks are fine for babies or juveniles, but I think they get a little bit cramped when you have an adult. And I know this is this is quite a common question with people with 10 gallon tanks, should I upgrade it? So I figured I'd sort of answer it all here now. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've liked it and you want me to make more, make sure you leave a like, but thank you for watching guys and goodbye.